Hi, this is Glenn Lowry. This clip is taken from a conversation I recently posted at my Patreon page. The full episode will be available for free in a few days, but if you want to see it now and support the show, please go to patreon.com forward slash Glenn Show. That's patreon.com forward slash Glenn Show. Thanks. It's in Western China, one of the poorest areas. We can see how the interactions between the parent and the child are leading to the growth of skills on the part of the child. Both in social Western and China. Western tell China. Me little, tell me a little bit more about this project. It sounds fascinating. It is. Now, this is a place, Western, there's an area called Gansu. Gansu is in the, one of the poorest areas. And so what we're learning, though, is that those people who engage the child in an emotionally supportive way, and just teach the child. So what's, what are they doing? This is something that was tried in Jamaica. It's called the uh, reach up and learn study in Jamaica. The China studies patterned after that study. And so what, what that neighbor, what it did is it went into those neighborhoods and it essentially taught the parents how to interact with the child. Now that sounds strange, but if you think about it, it turns out both in the United States and Jamaica and in China, a lot of parents don't really know how to parent. And what do I mean by that? They don't have a clear idea what a normal growth trajectory is for a child, what a child can do, and they often don't understand how powerful they are in shaping the life of the child. So you give them that kind of information. Nobody's being forced to do anything. Just empower people. Almost every caretaker of a young child really wants that child to succeed. There are some abusive parents, but really this is, and you empower them with that information, then that's, it, you will see huge gains. And this, this has happened. I mean, Flavio Cunha, who's at Rice, did some studies with a group in Philadelphia, and now he's doing with a group of people in Houston, where he's now located. And what they found is that these interventions have a powerful role in teaching parents what to expect of their children and what they can do with their children. And when they are told this information, they act on it. So it's something very basic. We took, took the, see the whole idea. Remember Dr. What was his name? Oh, Skinner. Remember the Skinner, this guy, the behavioral psychologist. B.F. Skinner? B.F. Skinner. Yeah, with the box, the box. The box, the Skinner box. Yeah. You know, that was about the most atrocious child development strategy you could imagine. You want an anti Skinner box. You want the mother or the caretaker working closely with the child. And the more encouragement, because what, what's happening is the kid is like a sponge. The child is picking up these ideas and picking up the language and imitating the parent. And the parent plays a powerful, powerful role. And it's just been neglected. It's also well, neglected. What's that? Most policy uh, discussions in the U.S. talk about inequality. There's a lot of talk about schools, but there's not so much talk about parenting. I know. And actually, it scares me a lot that that literally to me that I don't quote me too much. <laughs> I don't know how widely re watched you are. But to me, the whole evil of this process has been kind of schools of education and teachers unions that want to create the idea of the school as an activity in and of itself, detached from society, a separate social agency that is in charge of building children, and not realizing how powerful the parental support for the child in school is, and how much, you know, kids are spending still the majority of their day at home, or at least around their parents and neighborhoods. And literally, I mean, here in Chicago now, in a lot of the districts, some of the school districts like in Inglewood, really poor areas, what you're finding is that parents aren't even allowed in the school. They're afraid that you, they're going to bring in guns or they have to go through metal detectors. And so the, the parent is kind of screened out. The teachers don't want them around because they may be drug uh, addicts or be, have weapons and so forth. So to me, that's the missing link. And the missing link also for job training. What people don't understand is how powerful mentoring is. Programs that take adolescent kids and give them advice. Again, I would use the word scaffold, but it's now they're older. The scaffolding is a different activity. 
but give people advice, give people mentoring are, are, are showing huge effects. I just got a study from Germany a few days ago by Ludiger Wussmann. He probably sent, sends you his material. He's at University of Munich and literally showing very powerful effects on German uh, uh, teenagers, adolescent interventions, precisely of this type of mentoring, fostering children and following them into the workplace and so forth. You're not worried about uh, violating uh, privacy and autonomy of those. You say information. Okay, you can give people information and then they can act on it as they choose. More robust interventions into uh, households uh, might might raise some uh, questions of uh, of privacy or so. Oh, for sure. I think that's, you know, when the Nixon was president, there was a uh, move. Mondale came, across, came up with a bill. Remember that? At that time, when Nixon was president, was Republican president in the Democratic House and Senate. And Mondale came up with an early childhood program, a precursor to, you know, kind of expanding Head Start to a more of a national and more uh, well-supported, a better supported level. And Nixon vetoed it for precisely the reason you gave, that you were intervening, that the early years of the childhood were the province of the family. And I agree with that. I mean, to me, the most important piece of child development is the family. I mean, the fa- you've got to get the family on board. So I think of these interventions as empowering. You give them information. You give them options. But you don't sit around telling people, this is what you must do. But most parents, when they find out how important it is to read to the kid, even if they can't read that well, they will actually do this. And that's true in Jamaica. It's true in rural China. It's true in every place we've tried this kind of intervention. So it's very, it, 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 there is a whole literature emerging about the emotional basis of learning. You know, so, you know, the image of the kind of uh, military academy where the kids walk in and salute and, yes. you know, they're, are beaten at night and so forth and so on. That, that is not the model for successful child development. But you want the parent to be in the life of the child. It's now, really you know, important. as yeah. I do, how controversial talking about family is, is when you get into the area of race and racial disparities. Uh, I know. When I talk about all that. Yeah. And when I talk about my work, I always get attacked for blaming the victim. And this is by people who are really quite educated, usually African-American, but not all, not all. A lot of people saying you're, you're getting into personal lies, like you're saying. And I'm telling people, you know, the Moynihan report was valid. Well, I think it was. <laughs> Sorry. I think it's very important. And I, I think it was stated very badly. And the scientific basis was much weaker than what we have now. But family life is really important. Early fa- Look at the whole discussion today of, of poverty. People are sitting around and talking about growth of inequality. And they want to say, oh, it's because, you know, Zuckerberg has billions and so forth. Well, you know where most of the poverty is coming from. It's at the bottom, obviously, and the inequality is at the bottom. And who are those people? Those are families, single parent families with kids where the mother is stretched to the end. She can't, she has to work. She has very little resources. She doesn't have time to spend with her child. So there is a whole issue that the family is crumbling in some areas and should be part of any valid anti-poverty policy. But I agree with you. It's off the table. It's off the table. Uh, If anybody doesn't know, the Moynihan Report, 1965, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, the Negro family, uh, case for national action, uh, chronicling the rise of out of wedlock births amongst African Americans to about 25, 30% by the mid sixties and worrying that this would frustrate the goal of the civil rights movement uh, of incorporating African-Americans into the society, basically saying that this was a potential uh, game changer and uh, worrying very much about it. Um, and that was 25%. And you know, what is it? 70% now? What it is it like 30% the for the country as a whole? Oh, uh, 40, closer to 40. So uh, what what do you propose to do about this? You're saying, uh, can you put the genie back in the bottle on uh, family structure issues? Well, I think it's, I mean, the idea, I think Bush was talking about shotgun weddings and things. We're not talking about that. I think what we need to do is think more important, think more comprehensively. 
to recognize that raising a, a kid is an extraordinarily important task. It's societally very important. I think there's been a lot of thinking that housewives and mothering is kind of something that any old mediocre person can do and isn't all that important. And I think once we really, to me, it's really a bizarre that we still don't have, despite Wesley Claire Mitchell's cry, appeal for this 100 years ago about understanding the household, really we don't have a good measure of the value of a good mother on the life of the child. We, we have values of teachers now, some of these studies, <clears throat> but the mother is playing an enormous role. People are saying, what's the value of Perry Preschool? I'm sure that a mother is far more valuable than anything Perry Preschool can do. And the reason is that the mother spends, that's that interaction, it's the guidance, it's shaping the values of the child and staying with the child. But it's not saying the child must do this or that the parent must do that or that there's a preferred lifestyle. Maybe the parents don't want the child to grow up to be uh, you know, one thing or another. I don't think anything in knowledge says that everybody should be doing the same thing anyway. But I do think we really want to recognize the role of the mother. And I think that's, that role has been depreciated a lot. It's been, it's been in the public eye, the view is if the mother doesn't earn any money, then she's not doing anything. And that, I don't know. I, I, I find that I get deeply irritated by that because we know it's probably the most important task in society. It produces all of us. We are all products of our mothers, not just physically being born, it's being shaped by the mother and the father and, and the environment you're in. And I think, I just think we don't recognize the power of that, the importance of it in our policy. 